Hi everyone, welcome back. This time I'll be covering the I2C functions of the MSO19. An I2C bus consists of just two signals, a clock and a bidirectional data line. Unlike the SPI protocol, which contains a chip enable line, the I2C devices are selected via their I2C addresses. For low speed communication between a microcontroller and peripheral devices, I2C provides an I.O. efficient method compared to the SPI protocol. Typically, there is a master on the I2C bus controlling many slave devices. It is possible to have multiple masters, but it's trickier to implement. Communication over long distance or between different logic families, it is recommended to have an I2C bridge. In this session, I've set up an Arduino talking to a 24LC64EE prom. The Arduino wrote a message into the EE prom during the power up sequence and then proceeded to read and proceeded to repeatedly read back and display the data on the serial terminal. I'll cover different aspects of it, I2C analysis, including I2C triggering. Okay, so it's demo time. What do you see here is the Arduino. This is a um, Trinket Pro from Adafruit, a real pain to set up on my computer. I don't know why. Here's a 24LC64, and these are the pull up resistors. I normally use 2.2K to start, and depending on the logic drive and how far you need to drive, I'll change these, I'll scale these up and down. The way to, to figure out which what size to use is to look at the scope data. So let's take a look at the scope data. What you have here is the I2C data, the pulse train coming through. Let's look at the actual electrical characteristic of the signal. So I'm going to raise this to, let's see, uh, 50 meg looks good. See the slope? That's dictated by the rise time. If our resistor is too large, this will slew out. If the resistor is too small, this will rise up really fast and this falling edge will have a hard time to falling, especially during the, um, the acknowledge section, the acknowledge bit. So this is something you need to take to pay attention to when you wire up multiple I2C bus. And remember to end terminate the, um, the data line and the SEL lines. Don't terminate the big, uh, by the master, terminate at the last device. Let's see, let's slow this guy down again to 200K. So this is what's going on on the, um, on the I2C bus. And what I have, here's a little Arduino sketch that basically it, um, it wrote a bunch of data out. It starts writing and then it loops repeatedly. To one thing to pay attention to is, uh, I got this, by the way, I got this code from, from um, Arduino Playground. This, it's an older code, so there's a few things you need to, need to pay attention to. The send and request, send and receive, got changed to read and write. So there's something you just need to do a global replace on um, the Arduino, in the I Arduino IDE. Here's the, um, here's our 24LC64. It's an 8-pin device. It's got ground, and it's got three addresses. I mean, we can select, we can, and we can basically put up the eight devices. I got a write protect, got our clock, SEL, and then the data. The um, each I squared C device has their own unique address. And for the twenty four LC sixty four, it starts with one zero one zero. That's the start bit, and then one zero one zero, and then the three bits of what we set on the I/O pins, the rewrite bit, and then the acknowledge. So let's take a look at this signal inside um, on our oscilloscopes. Okay, first thing first, to find out if you actually have the right pin or not, I would recommend putting an oscilloscope just to have it set for rising. And if you have something that looks like a burst of data coming through is very consistent, you pretty much got the um, you can tell if you have the data line or you have the clock line. 
if you have a data line, you have some, you know, some dropouts. You have clock line, you have something very, very consistent. Like up here, the SEO is a clock line, and SDA, that's a data line. Um, the MSO 19 and the MSO 28, to get the triggering to work, we have very specific pins set up for trigger 4 and 5 for SEO and SDA. And the same thing on the MSO 19, the SEO and SEA, SDA. So I have the two SEO and SDA hooked up to the the the, the I2C outputs, I2C bus lines on the Arduino. So you can see here on the scope, on the logic, on the logic analyzer, the data is coming through. So what are we getting? Well, let me slow this guy down a little bit. If you're grabbing a logic analyzer, you can afford higher density. So let's see what we got. Up here, this button says, oh yeah, before you do that, what I did here was I changed the name to SEO SDA so it makes it make it easier for me. So I go to setup and go under logic analyzer and change channel four to SEO and channel five to SDA. So it'll display SDO SDA. And let's go to I square C. So we click on I square C itself, the I square C box. We start decoding the I square C from the trigger, actually from the beginning of the buffer, but then it goes to the trigger. You see it goes to, it did the one zero one zero and then the data. So since this is a read, so rewrite is in read and then we have the acknowledge. So what it's doing is it's right, it's requesting address number zero and then it gets the data back and get acknowledged and gets the data back actually wrote it actually it wrote into address zero and then it gets the data back i'm gonna pause this and then we get the data back we got the first bit coming back we got a we have a 74 up here hold on got a 74 that's the data coming back that's the first data Second one, we wrote into position number one. We got data coming back at 68. We wrote, we request with address from data from address number two. And we, we got 69, 0x69, which is in hex. And then we, it keeps going. So the entire buffer, if you actually maps out this 73, you map it out, you, you get. 74, 68, 69, 73, and then you get like 20, you get 20, and then you get, you get 69, and you get 73. So if you go to anywhere on the net, you start translating that. Our first bit is, first one is hex of 74. We got a T, and then the second one, you get 68, H and then 69 we got I and then the next one 73 got this a 20 it's going to give us a space so if you go on the serial terminal for the Arduino let's see where that where's that little serial terminal you actually you can see it says this is a date this is this space is a data from the EEPROM so we're decoding I square C data across and so what happens if you want to see a little bit further back? It's possible to use hold off to push the data back, let's say a few milliseconds. Uh, now that pretty much puts a trigger off the screen. When you hit go, you'll see data starts shifting. We're looking at the back of the packet now. And these are the data coming through. And we can see the data coming from the back of the buffer. Okay. So we got um that's twelve and then we got data coming back zero. Um, let's see what we got. Last couple of bytes, sixty, which is um sixty, which is M. So that translates to that's E that's the M from here. So another way to do it, so that was triggering on um, using the, the scope triggering on the falling edge. 
triggering on the falling edge of the I squared C theta because there was a big gap in between, so it's easy for the scope to grab onto. What happens if you're on trigger on the actual theta itself? You have a few choices. You can go logic, same exact trick. We can trigger for a zero, and same thing. See how we land it perfectly on the falling bit? We can also ask for zero, zero. And again, it's locked down onto the data. But with the, one of the most powerful feature of the MSO 19 is actually the serial triggering. So let's go to the serial trigger. Here's a nice select I square C. What I've selected now is um, zero. So my OSB, MSV to OSB. So zero one 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 zero 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 zero. That is seven. That is seventy. 0, 1, 0, 0 to 7, and 0, 0, 0, 0, 70, that's P. So if you look at the serial pattern, there's, a cur there's only one P, which is right here, EE prompt, the P right here. And we set up I square C, we hit go, locks on over here, goes on to our display. The red cursor here, that's the trigger cursor, and it decoded 70. It's exactly what we wanted it to be. And if you actually look, uh, let's see, this blue matches this cursor, trigger A, cursor A. So you can get, you can roughly see what the time relationship is, cursor B, by looking at the color of these horizontal lines. It matches the, the time on the vertical line. And to, there's four bytes in the I square C. You can do the first one and then put everything else, don't care. But if you have a longer sequence you want to trigger, you can add the rest of the bits into it. And it'll, again, it'll lock onto it. It'll lock onto the bits. So for example, I will trigger this one as one zero. Uh, let's see. Um, one zero, one zero, 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 one, two, three, one. So I can actually put this one is one zero one zero 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 one. Do I have that many bits? One zero one zero 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 one. Oh, I'm actually in the wrong place. It should be the other way around. That's the acknowledge bit. So zero one 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 zero 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 zero. That should get us a lock onto the actual data itself. Let's see where am I? We're locking onto P, and the next one should be A one. Ah, that's why I'm not getting a lock. It's A one. So it's one zero one zero 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 one. And then now we we have a lock. Um A one A one and then seventy and it locks onto the it finishes at the last byte the lock so it still locks in the same place as before. Okay, so I guess this covers the um, the basics of the I squared C triggering. And next time we'll cover the SPI triggering.